Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I can slow play with this. <laughs> we got all day. I don't think we have one. We have one. Mayor, Benefield, Brooks, yeah. Frizzalone, yeah. Gould, yeah. Hart, Ogala, Parker, yeah. Staley Ferry, yeah. Tuminello, yeah. Weigel, yeah. Winfrey, yeah. and Mustis. You have a quorum. Yeah. A number of the members are getting their uh, training for harassment, uh, sexual harassment. So even though they're not committing, they're here. I guess they'll touch the mark there. Uh, we have the approval of the minutes for March 8th. Second. Second. Conditions of direction. <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have executive, uh, executive session minutes. Thanks, Herb. Uh, for March 8th. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next we have an uh, update on the Will County Community Friendly. Uh, freight mobility study. Ann, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah. You know, so good. You brought you brought nice weather with you today. Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. You know, all the way from Springfield. I originally said ten minutes, Ann, but take all the time you want. <laughs> there we go. Maya. I'm, I'm only giving everybody the business, and you know if we can keep it around ten minutes. No, great. no, absolutely. So um, they uploaded the presentation onto your electronic packet, so you should have it available, and I'll, I'll run through it pretty quickly because I'll I think I'll you're I'll all pretty familiar that. with the background on this. But um, it, looking at slide two, I just want to remind that it's only been six Thank months you. since the plan's been adopted on um, September 21st. Um, a lot of things have been going on in the interim, and a lot of it was obviously driven by your leadership, and we'll talk about those here in a second. Um, I just wanted to remind you of the recommendations on slides three through five, so really on slide four, where we're really focusing our efforts right now are in um, implementing the investment priorities identified in the plan, so that's really around the projects, and the project, um, getting the projects to a point where they can be constructed and then identifying the, identifying funding opportunities to actually construct the projects. Uh, we're also working um, in partnership with the Will County Governmental League, um, county officials in developing the designated truck route network for the county. Yep. Um, and we are working to improve the coordination of oversized overweight permitting between jurisdictions. You guys have taken um, a significant step in that area. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then the CED, the Center for Economic Development, is taking the leadership in terms of workforce initiatives and working with the industry and having them lead those efforts. And obviously, um, the next item on expanding east-west highway connectivity, <coughs> um, a lot of work that you've done in terms of requesting studies on I-80 and really pushing the initiative with I-80 addresses that. Um, on slide five, there are just a few other items that um, are a little bit um, sitting on the back burner right now, but are definitely um, areas that we will continue to implement as we move forward. On the key projects list, I wanted to revisit where we were with some of these key projects. Uh, we had communicated last um, fall to decision makers in Washington um, what the priorities were here in relation to the National Freight Network, um, focusing on I-80 and then also on I-55. Um, on the I-80 piece, again, uh, through your leadership, you've requested the tollway do a study on I-80. Um, we've had staff level meetings with the tollway and with IDOT um, since IDOT is, uh, it is their roadway um, to, to find out how we can push them um, to, to do what you have requested in that study so we can understand what the alternatives are in terms of generating revenues and then also what the alternatives are in terms of phasing construction. Um, 
one of the things that we found as we met with them is that the interchange at US 30 and I 80 is ready to construct. All of the land acquisition has been done. Um, the project has been designed. Um, they just needed the funding to get it built. Um, so we worked with IDOT um, intensively over the last couple of weeks to get them to submit it as their um, Illinois Competitive Freight Program grant application for District 1. And they did submit that grant application, and um, Speaker Mustis and um, County Executive Walsh signed a letter of support on behalf of the county for that project. <coughs> I think that project will compete very well. They also got letters of support from New Lenox um, and also from the Center for Economic Development and the Will County Governmental League. Um, IDOT is giving extra credit to projects that come in with um, a broad array of partnerships, and I think what we've done here has been able to demonstrate that. So I think that project um, should compete well. If it is selected, they could go to construction very quickly on that project. So that ticks another one of those I-80 projects off the list, and we can start focusing our efforts on some of the other improvements on I-80 that really need to happen. Um, I-55 and Weber Road interchange, when we met with IDOT, they had indicated that that project has now been let and they are moving to construction on that. So that's another one we can tick off the list and it's ready to go. I did want to point out that there, um, as a result of the federal budget that was passed on March 23rd, um, there are some upcoming funding opportunities that we need to be in a position to be able to compete for. Um, the federal budget for fiscal year 18 included one and a half billion dollars for the TIGER program. And the interesting thing with that is Congress put in a very definitive timeline in the appropriations bill so that those projects have to be awarded um, no later than mid-December. Um, we would have to have an application turned in by mid-August. Um, the notice of funding has to be out um, by the middle of next month, the middle of May. So we will be um, in a position at that point to know what the requirements are and I think um, we need to be able to be flexible enough and agile enough to pick a project that will compete well for um, that program. The budget also included $340 million for a consolidated rail infrastructure and safety improvement program. Um, typically that's focused on railroads, but um, included in that would be um, projects for grade separations. So I, I would ask that we start thinking about grade separations that are critical to not only freight movement, but um, quality of life in our communities here that might fit that program. The size of the program, 340 million, is actually about four times what it is currently. Um, so there is some opportunity there. In addition, um, at the state level, the Illinois Commerce Commission runs a grade crossing protection program. And they just announced their five-year program, uh, I think, in the last couple weeks. But if we wanted to get submitted and considered for the next round of grants, um, those would have to be turned in um, prior to January of next year is, is when they begin their deliberations. So um, again, in terms of looking at grade separations that are important to the county, I think we need to consider what would be a priority and try to put some things in um, to try to see if we can get those things funded. Can, can I ask you a question? Can the railroads, uh, th can they also apply for these funds? They, they can for the federal funds, but for the state funds, those are to, those are for communities. Okay, got it. So that's, that's for governmental entities. Okay. And if the railroad wanted to participate in a grade separation project, they would need a public sector sponsor. So. So we, we, would, be we should probably look to partner with the railroad. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then finally, the um, next round of the INFRA program. Um, we're still waiting for awards to announce for the current round, but the next round um, would be next, um, hopefully, next federal fiscal year, which starts October 1st. So hopefully sometime this fall, we'll see a notice of funding opportunity for that. And there's just under a billion dollars available for this next round. Um, and those projects are typically focused on freight projects, so we need to think about which freight projects we might want to have considered for that. Um, the sense I get just from conversations and then from the direction of leadership is that you know we really are focused on I-80, so we need to figure out what we should try to be picking off that list next that would um, help alleviate some of the issues that we experience out on I-80. 
In terms of other elements of the plan, um, we've made a significant amount of progress when it comes down to advocacy and intergovernmental outreach. Um, community collaboration is where we've been doing the truck routing work and also the oversized overweight application um, per and permit site. And then, this, as I mentioned, the CED is taking the leadership role in the um, workforce initiative. For the advocacy piece and intergovernmental outreach piece, um, many of you were involved in meetings with USDOT and our congressional delegation, um, to a lesser extent, our legislative delegation. Um, when the Will County Governmental League did their lobby day, I know some officials um, from the board and from the county uh, had the opportunity to meet with the governor and present um, the executive summary of our freight plan um, so that he is aware. We've also had in this room, we've had a meeting with Secretary Blankenhorn and then we've gone to District 1 to meet with staff there to talk about projects and what we can do to facilitate the, uh, an acceleration of those projects and how we can partner with them. And then um, the Illinois State Freight Advisory Committee, um, which is going to be reviewing the competitive grant applications later this month. Um, there will be a presentation on our freight plan done by John Grueling. Um, that's on the 23rd of April, and that's down at the CMAP offices in the Willis Tower. Um, you know, if you're available, I would encourage you to come because you'll also get to hear whether or not our, our project has made a top, has hit a top scoring level, the, the Route 30 interchange. Um, we've also, you've been able to meet with um, the chairman of the tollway, and we've also met with the executive and planning staff there to talk to them about I-80 and um, what they can do to help us understand what the options out there are. Um, in terms of the region, we've met with regional leaders through the CMAP Northeast Illinois County Board Chairs um, Forum. We've had several meetings at CMAP. We've talked to the policy committee. We've talked to um, Executive Director Zabo. And I, I believe um, Executive Director Zabo will be attending one of your upcoming mm -hmm. county boards to, to talk. And hopefully he'll discuss some of the issues that we've raised with him. Um, I did a presentation for the CMAP Freight Committee, which is a regional freight committee. And also, um, a number of us met with the executive staff there to walk through what some of the issues were and what we need to partner with them on in terms of promoting some of the implementation items in the plan. We've had an opportunity to meet with the chief engineer in Cook County um, and also the planning staff from Cook County. And we talked about some of those cross-border issues, uh, <coughs> particularly around truck routing and oversize overweight permitting and how maybe we could coordinate better um, to make those things more seamless as you cross the county lines. Um, there's been a presentation done to the Three Rivers Association of Realtors who, if you remember, um, provided the seed money for the um, scoping of the study that we did. And then and on the local government level, um, there's been a lot of activity with the Will County Governmental League overall. There was a presentation done there that many of you attended. And then different members of the, um, of the stakeholder group has met with officials in Joliet, Shanahan, Crest Hill, Mokina, and New Lenox. And there has also been a meeting with 18 of the 25, 25 township commissioners in the county. Um, really that <laughs> focused on truck routing. Um, and we're starting to get feedback from that meeting um, in terms of what kinds of limits we see in, out, out in the township areas. Um, there has also been some work, which I don't have mentioned here, on the website. Um, we're trying to make sure that it is updated and contains current information about the status of where we are in implementing some of the things that were recommended in the, print, in the plan. Uh, the county-wide integrated truck route, we've kicked off the project. As I mentioned, we've met with the townships. Um, there was a meeting with um, some officials of the county and um, communities in eastern Will County. Um, we're waiting for feedback from those officials. Um, they, they were very engaged and interested in providing information and also into identifying routes that they think would make good truck routes in, in their part of the county. Um, and we've started to receive some of the data back from the townships and some of the communities that we met with. 
The other thing, we talked to CMAP um, extensively. They did a project around O'Hare for a truck route, and they developed a truck route um, network around um, in, I think there's nine communities around O'Hare that they developed mm -hmm. that around. Well, they've got money that um, they are developing a program to do that exercise again, but in three separate areas in the region. So we are approaching them about coming to Will County and doing a section of Will County. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we're in active um, talks with them on that, and we'll be asking for your input as to um, how we proceed with that. But I think that's a huge opportunity. Um, that's they'll be self-funded. There's no local match required. Um, I think that's a good way to, to to be very comprehensive. What constitutes a region? You said three would be conduct mean conductor. What's a region? How large is the region? Where is that? Comprise? It's the C map region. So it's so it's basically Cook County, and the Cowlers, and then just a little bit into DeKalb, and okay. I think a little bit into Grundy. Okay. So that's okay. that's Thank essentially you. the C map okay. region. Um, we've also made some progress on oversized overweight permitting again through your leadership um, adopting ox cart um, and then looking at how ox cart and the IDOT system can be integrated um, we've had conversations with the IDOT staff that's in charge of their um, oversized overweight permitting the idea is to create a seamless um, approach for um, those oversized overweight loads so that um, as they cross jurisdictions, they can still move seamlessly under a permit. Um, and hopefully, um, through the work that we're doing, we're going to see a higher rate of um, participation, which means more revenues, but also uh, a higher rate of compliance and, and, and lower um, need for enforcement. And then finally, as I mentioned, the industry-led workforce initiative. Um, the CED has been leading that effort. They had a kickoff for the project by meeting with um, higher education and others in the region that deal with um, workforce training. And they're in the process right now developing a mission, goals, and strategies for what they want to accomplish. And they are planning their next meeting for April 25th at 8 in the morning at the um, CED offices just down the road. And with that, that is where we're at with implementing the plan, and I'm happy to answer any additional <coughs> questions. <coughs> Excuse me, anyone have any questions for Ann? You know, uh, you know the only thing I, I would mention, Ann, that, that uh, uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the CED, along with some others, are trying to put a group together that are being very focused on I-80 and in initiatives. You're probably aware of that. I'd, I'd heard they that met they for were the first time. Together. They met. They don't have it together, but they met and just talked about perhaps common uh, 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 goals here on I-80. So just to make you aware of that, I see. Talk to John Grueling, uh, like Nick and I, and. Reagan attended that meeting. It was pretty basic, just talking about what would they include. You know, and I actually suggested they should go further east on I-80 and talk to those communities, including going to I-80, because they have a vested interest in the whole corridor. Uh, uh, That's you know, absolutely the, true. You know, the Tinley Parks, the, you know, uh, uh, Rich Township. You can, I guess you could almost go to the state line because, uh, I like to point out to everyone, you know, you go from, you know, you know, on Indiana, it's four lanes all the way, and then you get to Illinois, and it goes to t three to two, to the mm -hmm. state line. I don't quite understand that funneling of all that traffic, because they're not getting off. Yeah, no. And yeah. in fact, there's more getting on when you get to 57 yeah, yeah. and 355 right. and 394 and all yeah. those other so, access so, points. So, so, was, so they're, they're doing some work. You might want to talk to John about what they're up to. Okay, definitely. Uh, and uh, I, I have no other questions. Go ahead. Thank you. So the Route 30 and I-80 interchange project, um, very well, very familiar with that as it's in Mr. Weigel's in my district. I'm curious to know, is that 
on the 23rd if they make a decision to move forward with that project. I believe it's shovel ready. It's already engineered. Yes. So we're, it's ready to go. Would that be a project that would then start, you think, by the end of the year or go off for letting at least or have a... My guess is, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but my guess is it would be in a, on a letting later this year or early next yeah. year so that they could start the work okay. next spring. Uh, they're, they're not going to make the official decision on who gets awarded the grant until June 1st. They're just presenting um, okay. the list of projects and how they scored to the freight advisory group on the 23rd. But and, if I got announced it, don't you think <laughs> they kind of announced the project, didn't they? Well, they, 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 they're, wanting to, they're wanting to hold off on an official announcement oh, okay. until they okay. go through their own yeah. executive machinations. Sure. So, so that project is just for the on and off ramps, or is that for the bridges as well? Do you know that? It, I don't know what the specifics okay. of the project is, but I think it's a full um, interchange reconstruction. Wow. So That's going to be expensive. I think it's, I'm thinking it'll be similar to what they did at uh, 45 and uh, 80. Oh, okay. Which is pretty extensive, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely needs it, so this this would be outstanding. Yeah, so I hope it's been they they've got it ready to go. They just have not had the funding available, and so this is a potential pot of money that they could access. And where that happens, right there, is actually where it goes from three lanes right down to two, and then you hit that intersection. So if you if that intersection improvement actually can widen that and open it up, there's a lot of individuals that exit at Route 30. Yeah. That would actually alleviate a lot of the congestion and some of the issues on I-80. And, and when we met with IDOT um, just to talk um, in terms of improvements on I-80, their plan is that as they do these improvements, they, the shoulders will be constructed to full depth, which means that Perfect. at some point they can yep. be converted to, to an lanes. actual traffic yes. lane. Right. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. And I do have one other question, uh, uh, and that's about CMAP. Uh, and CMAP's view of I-80, I, you know, I, I believe it's changed a little bit over the course of the last few years. Can you comment on how CMAP is now viewing some of the infrastructure in Will County? Yeah, so on, in terms of I-80, they've actually, they released earlier this week um, their go to, um, yeah, on to 2050 plan, it was go to right. 2040, on to 2050 plan, which is their next 10 year plan. And they included in the constrained portion, fiscally constrained portion of that plan, um, I 80 improvements. There are some I 80 improvements. They've also included in there um, the idea of looking and studying, as you have suggested, what are some of the alternatives in terms of generating revenue to do a full rebuild on I-80 and address some of the critical issues out there that could take some time if we just piecemealed it as we're doing currently. And what's the significance of that? Can you say, I, I, I get the I get the, I, at least the impression that that's kind of significant. Yeah, well, I think it's very significant if you're in the fiscally constrained plan that that means um, in terms of moving projects forward on I-80, um, there's a lot of steps that have been removed, and it also means that as a region, um, they're more focused on what's happening on I-80 than what they might have been in the past. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, on the infra grant, what's what's our timing again? Because last time we were kind of rushing at the end, so we're it's, thinking that October 1st ish. Well, we're it's still wide open and up in yeah. the air because the administration um, in Washington has. Um, has taken some time to get their feet under them and make, they finally made selections on the Tiger grant for last year. And um, now the same people that review that do review the infra grants. And so the, this round of infra grants have not yet been announced. What I've heard is it will be um, the second quarter. So we're in the second quarter. So hopefully in the next few months, we're gonna hear from Washington who gets awarded this round of infra grants. Then um, Congress has mandated a quick turnaround on this next Tiger program. So it's the same set of people working on those grant application reviews. My guess is that they have to have those out in December. So my, if I had to guess, I would say that the infra notice of funding opportunity would come out in the fall and my guess would be later in the fall so we need to start picking our project oh absolutely because our we stuff together so right. we're not scrambling at the end and we want to start well. building partnerships with with people to see if we can attract some um, private interest in the work that we're going to want to submit 
Any, any other questions? And thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, moving along here. Next, we have a discussion of uh, compensation for elected officials. Yeah, you know, I'm going to see if I can just maybe cut the, this a little short. There was, there was uh, discussion at the last executive committee meeting. Uh, you know, there, there, there's been there's been times when uh, this committee has given a strong recommendation going forward, uh, but since there seems to be uh, different viewpoints on the compensation of elected <coughs> officials. I'm going to suggest that we just move this to the full county board for debate. Let, it's a board decision, uh, ultimately. Let, 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 if there's further discussion that needs to take place, let it go there. I would just uh, move resolutions with the current salaries uh, with, n with no recommendation from this committee and, and have a discussion, discussion at the... Uh, uh, full county board, uh, at which point you could amend anything on that uh, on the uh, resolution that the board wanted to support. So okay. that's kind of my view. So what is that deadline again? Was that it's is May? It, but, is it May? But our meeting comes after May. After the after the after the, after the, after the deadline. <coughs> So Maybe it's it's six late. six right. months or 180 right. days. Right. So if we waited till the May. We would we would correct. not. We would have to have a special meeting early in okay. the month. So we'll be okay moving it to next Thursday. That's right. Right. We'll, okay. we'll have to make okay. a decision okay. this okay. Thursday. Okay. 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 So, so I'll make the motion to move it to the full board. With no recommendation. No recommendation. Uh, just move to, <laughs> this, this, but we do have to move a resolution. So this well, let's move everything that where it is now. And we'll just move it, and it can be discussed at the full county board. Okay. All right, we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, under new business, uh, update on election results from the city of Aurora. Nancy? Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> we had a meeting yesterday afternoon um, with K King County, Kendall County, Will County, and the city of Aurora, their uh, attorneys, and the, the judge that's going to be hearing the case. And basically what they're decided they're going to, and Phil Mock was with me w at the meeting from the, our state's attorney's office. And what they decided that they were going to do their meeting, the judge is hearing it on the 24th of April. But basically we need to clean up, we got to finish this March election because they want to make sure that they're paying their bills. If they have a discovery or recount, who's the, the state of Aurora has to hear it. So at this point, I don't know much information to report. It's just that um, they want to make sure that their bills are paid. And my, our, what we want for this county is every, all the different counties have different election equipment, you know, different registration systems, different vendors. So now the judge has to make a decision of who's going to be getting what. But to me, it should be fair. They should split it. as many precincts that you have should de determine on how, what equipment you're going to get. Kane County is trying to take the lead on everything, but um, we're, yeah, okay. but we're making sure that we're going to get our equal end of it. Okay. So, so it's so um, mainly. So hopefully we'll get the funds then to buy the equipment for the precincts we have. So right now what I'm working on is I'm getting, working with my vendor to get the voter registrations into our database so then we could determine how many precincts I'm going to get out of those seven precincts. I don't feel we're going to need seven precincts. You're so gonna we're going to um, consolidate them to make it maybe three, which would be better. Yeah. Save money. That's what we have to all start doing here in this county to save money yeah. instead of always spending money. So, yeah. um, but I have to get that data. I have to get those registrations in my database, um, and then once we do that, we're working with GIS then to the precinct lines. It's it's happening at the right time because this is the summer that we send out voters cards anyhow. So then we would just um, send out voters cards to those residents also. Um, the people that live in that area, they are already um, reaching out to my office wanting to be election judges. So we're going to recruit some election judges. Hopefully we could use some of their polling places. So we're, we're working together. City of Aurora is, you know, working with us. But we're keeping it, um, the meetings only small sizes. Everybody wants to meet with us. You know, okay, could we meet with you? But we decided that we're all, we're all going to meet. The attorneys are meeting with the judge. The county clerks, they're just, the attorneys are just getting the information from each of their county clerks. When, when you anticipate, Nancy, that decision will be made? They're going to court April 24th, and then I'll, if it's okay, I'll probably come back in May again yeah. to give another update yeah. okay. on the, um, 
So it's all, it's going to keep happening. But right after the judge rules this, then we pretty much own that. We own it. So I right. have to take total responsibility of those um, those residents up there. So I once they we make the change, then we'll have to move quickly but um, efficiently to make sure that we send voters cards out to those residents that are, not, are now in Will County. Um, I will be putting something on my website to let those residents know. Communication with the website is probably the best thing that we could do, and do press releases too. So. Okay. Very good. Anybody Question? have any questions? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, any indication that the judge would go the other way? And what is actually before him? I mean, is it just saying that they're the eliminating the Aurora the, system? The voters voted to eliminate it. Right. So now it's in the court's hands to follow the the laws of what's uh, how it happens. Because at first, at fr and Mary's been involved in this also with me, um, Mary and Phil, because at first, and, and um, Reagan, because we had a meeting in my office, and I was the one that decided that we needed to have a meeting with the other county clerks, you know, because everybody could be doing their own thing. So I call, we called for a meeting, and then it was held at, in Kane County that us county clerks went and, and discussed this. So we're basically having to follow statute the law of what we're instructed to do right after court. Right, the court is going to certify the results of the election. And that's, the, they're just certifying, the, they're not like saying, they talking about the division of the dollars and yeah. No, dollars we haven't even got to that point and, yet. But that's not going to be done by the courts, or is it? I hope it does be yes. done by the it courts. Is. That's that's the best it's way. It's almost like a divorce. <laughs> it's like a divorce. So they're just going in here and they got to figure out what our assets we, are and who has the most children and all that kind of we stuff. We don't want King County oh, to take the lead, but we want to make sure the judge is, you know, the judge is have, getting all the information and he's going to distribute it the fair way, depending on how many, it should be on how many voters that you have that's going to pertain to our county, you know, how many of those voters, voters are coming that are here. Yeah, because voters. Because if, if you go in and now say and you consolidate. No, we're just dealing voters, with voters. Not voters. precincts. It's voters. Okay. I'm just, I don't feel we need to have seven precincts, but we're going to, I'll bring that to the board. No, and I'm well, talking about yeah. in dollar distribution. Right. That they wouldn't say, oh, well, you only need three versus seven voter yeah. registration boxes, therefore we're cutting your dollars down. Mm -hmm. And there's more than just boxes. Well, yeah, I mean, I understand. <laughs> that's why the database has to be switched over. So we're, I, I, I'm going to bring keep coming back to the board and letting you know um, what we have, what it we're doing. It would almost seem, Nancy, that you'd almost have to come up with your budget of what this transition would be, and that would be what we would go in and request. I would think. First, I think I have to get the database, their registrations in our database, and then decide working with but GIS. That, but that's an expense. Yes. So you're talking about actually going through and making sure that we're documenting all the expenses in this transition so that when we do go before whoever's going to make that decision, because Aurora's got a, f uh, a dollars already allocated for this. Mm -hmm. I well, mean, there, there's there's a the revenue stream for them budget through, the, they, through their budget. Mm -hmm. So we need to know exactly it. what those dollars are that you're spending. So this can't be a, we're just doing this and then we're going forward. This is, we got to be tracking personnel time and all that stuff so that we know the actual dollars. And that's why we have me I have meetings with Phil and Mary so they know all the different steps that we need to do before which with also the, with the cost. Dollars. Yes. Yes. So I, I'm, time is money I always say. Exactly. So <laughs> I hope that you're collecting you're tracking all this stuff so that when you guys do go in with a final budget to them <coughs> a request for dollars mm -hmm. that it includes all our current personnel time that you're doing in order to be able to prepare for this transition. And we're taking on more responsibilities too. Because it's more voters that we're getting, more people that will be voting by mail. Our voter information guide is going to be hitting more households. Yeah. So this is an ongoing expense. It's just not, okay, this project that we're implementing. It's an ongoing cost for the county that we're doing this. So some projections should also be included. That's what I'm doing, too. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Ray, you had something? Yeah, I just, you know, at the end of the day, no matter how we slice it, these are still Will County or residents. Yeah. They're still Will County voters, and we are responsible <coughs> for that. So... The seven precincts that you feel that we could be able to possibly move to three, is it just that they're, they had smaller populations and the, the way they broke out their precincts? I think it was just the um, districts. There was a lot of um, farmland or there was open space. Okay. So they had smaller areas because you're supposed to, statute says that you're supposed to try to have the voters stay in their own precinct instead of going to another precinct size. I understand. Size. So it's, okay. I think they have a lot of open land. More than How does this do. affect the it's actual... Yeah. <laughs> uh, election results once. I mean, because I know there are times when you can't certify because you have to wait for outside agencies like there were a commission to get us the results. Is this going to allow us to have 
Oh, we're very I, happy this is happening. I, I, because I City figure. of Aurora has always been a difficult yeah. to get the certification from them. Matter of fact, we canvassed on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and I was dealing with them on Monday trying to get those election results into my system. Sure. So this is going to be a good thing for our county. That's, that's what I was leading mm -hmm. to. Thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any other questions? Thank you. Yes. Oh, thank you. I think I'm on there for one other thing, yeah, too. Yeah, stay there. <laughs> Transferring appropriations between funds and budgeting uh, on hand in the county clerk's budget. Who? Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion. Okay, Very thank you, everybody. Enjoy we the sunshine. We just want you to keep Enjoy coming back, Nancy. We, keep we, keep before you retire, just keep coming back. Okay, keep I'll coming keep coming back. back. All, right. all right, thank you, everybody. Kidding. Uh, warning bid for energy services. Sam? Am I seeing a lot of paper there? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. You got a box of well, it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to my shot. We all These are extras in case. Mary, you have one right here. What's in the folder is just a uh, go right into smaller than that. Than that. that. <laughs> it got smaller than that. And then Mike, I'm just going to put the extra yeah. in the middle. She's going to grab the um, iPad and use your thumb drive because. <laughs> well, it's important to yeah. have right. those three things. The bottom yeah. lines. I have Let's try. There you go. Let's see. It is interesting. The market rate doesn't. Okay. Uh, I doesn't don't actually think I do. No, I don't. Sorry. Do you have anything to do like beforehand to say? Yes. Yes. I feel sure like Thank you. Your Good morning. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, great to be in front of you again. I'm just going to give a little introduction to what we're going to be talking about while they set up our technology here. I'm going to be introducing an opportunity for us to save costs on energy today. Um, in a moment, I'm going to introduce Mike English, Vice President of Tradition Energy, which is a U.S. Communities Contracted Energy Consultancy. Currently, Will County pays a retail rate for gas and electric. However, in Illinois, we have the opportunity to buy that energy commodity, the supply, wholesale, which will save us, which will save us money. And so on the basis of our U.S. Communities Contract um, consultant here, they were able to go out to bid on our behalf, and we are going to present those results. And Mike is also going to give an overview of the regional market outlook. So with that said, I'm going to have um, Mike take over in just a moment here when we get the PowerPoint open. Okay, I think we're up and running. Um, like Sam said, my name is Mike English. I'm from Tradition Energy. Um, just to give you a quick backstory, Tradition Energy, we are the nation's largest, most experienced full service energy procurement advisory firm. Like Sam mentioned, we are the exclusive energy advisor for all U.S. communities members nationally. And so we assist their members with managing and reducing their energy costs. Um, like Sam said, 
We're here today to talk about procurement opportunities for the power and gas. And so this is the, um, the results of those auctions that we've conducted and negotiating rates for the power, power supply itself and the natural gas supply, as those are the components that you can shop out. Um, so the numbers that we're talking about today do not include the delivery side of the bill that you would see from ComEd or NICOR, and this is strictly just supply. So, and I'm going to jump ahead uh, to uh, slide 12, in, or so, I'm sorry, slide 8. Um, the first few slides there are just a, a little commentary about the marketplace for this region and what the fundamental factors are that impact power and gas uh, prices in this region. But this chart here does a, an illustrative example of what the historical price has been with ComEd. So if you have done nothing, if you're just simply getting your, your power through ComEd, this is the price you would have effectively paid over the past 10 plus years. Um, you can see it's a pretty volatile market. Electricity is one of the most volatile commodities that's uh, traded in, in the world uh, following that natural gas. And so that green line on that chart illustrates um, a result of the bid that we've uh, conducted to show you where you'd be coming in, minimizing on a historical trend versus what you've been paying with, with ComEd. Um, some key statistics on those numbers, the average price with ComEd over the past 10 years has just been over three cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, the max price, about six and a half minimum, just over two. Um, so it's, again, pretty volatile commodity. Moving forward, um, why we're, we're exploring the idea of procuring today as opposed to waiting is from a historical perspective, when you can go out in the marketplace and buy energy on a forward-looking basis, um, for calendar years 19, 20, and 21, respectively, um, we're relatively close to the all-time minimum price that they've traded for. So from a historical perspective, I believe it's a very good time to, to look to hedge on a longer-term basis. Um, and moving forward, we don't expect these prices to stay at these levels, and we'll get to that in a few moments. Uh, just giving you a breakdown of the usage profile for Will County. Um, there was 32 accounts that we included for the electricity bid. Uh, totaling just over 17 million kilowatt hours in energy annually. Um, you can see there there's obviously a little seasonality using more energy in the summer, but fairly consistent over the 12-month the period. And this is the results of the bid, the first bid we did on uh, March 21st. Um, you can see direct energy is highlighted there as they came in with the lowest overall price uh, for all terms that we went out to procure for. Um, their product is 100% swing, meaning the county can use as little or as much energy as needed. The price would always stay the same. And it's consolidated build, so you'd get one bill through them. Again, these numbers were from March 21st. And per our discussion last week with Jim and uh, Dean and a few others, um, we wanted to also look at different options of including renewable energy in the products uh, to see if that would be something of interest. So these offers here are your standard offers. These have the state minimum requirements for the renewable portfolio standards uh, that are mandated by Illinois and don't have anything in, in addition to that. Uh, moving forward. But Mike, for you, yeah. move on. on uh, I'd like to just have you touch on it a little bit more. Sure. Currently, the state of Illinois mandates that a certain percentage of uh, energy comes from renewable. Correct. Which is, what's the percentage? Uh, as it stands right now, for cal calendar year 2018, it's uh, just over 12.5%. Uh, there's a 1% escalator in there, so each year moving forward, they require all uh, retail suppliers or the local delivery company, ComEd, or if you're downstate Ameren, to increase that percentage 1% moving forward. But if Will County said, we want 50% of our energy come from renewables, mm -hmm. you, we can contract that. Correct. We can, and they'll set aside renewable energy for Will County on the grid, so e to speak. Exactly. So if, if the county elected to procure more than the state minimum, that supplier that you would, that was meeting the other side of that transaction would go onto the marketplace and source X percentage of your load, the 17 million kilowatt hours, uh, from renewable resources, whether that's a solar farm or a wind farm or some other renewable mm -hmm. asset. And when we, we, we spoke uh, uh, earlier, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you thought there would not be a problem that there's enough renewable on the grid that we could certainly raise our percentage. And there's no additional cost to Will County. There, there is a marginal cost, and marginal we'll, go through cost. The, we'll go through the results of what the differences are between okay. the standard offers and those different renewable percentages above that. I just wanted to bring it up now so you can think about mm -hmm. right. the renewable portion of, of well, the program. To, to that point, program. with our 
gas uh, extraction from the landfill. Mm -hmm. How much of that? How much do we have a good idea in your relation to all your numbers? How much energy we're actually putting into the grid, and what the benefit is to the county from that standpoint? I don't know if Sam would know that or not. So we sell that energy that is produced. Right. Um, if you're looking to see how much electricity is sold every year since we've been in production, I don't know those numbers off the top of my head. That but would be a really good thing to know, but I'm actually relating it to us and our decision-making process, and is any of this, and does this impact yeah. what we're doing here? Those numbers that come from waste management. Don't forget, so we, we don't generate. We just sell the we gas. We just sell the gas. Right. right. So understood. It should but be it's a report. Still renewable to, energy. And well, it should be we're going yeah. this. It direction. should be a report that comes from waste management. We should ask them for it. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. should be able to provide that yeah. for yeah. you. We'll ask them. Well, yes. Right. They should. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mike. Um, so this result here is from yesterday. So these are the most current options that you see there. These are just the standard offers again. Uh, essentially the same numbers that we saw a few weeks back. Uh, the market's been relatively stable. Uh, however, this time Constellation Energy came in as the top supplier. Um, mm -hmm. Same idea, 100% swing, meaning the county can use or as little as much energy as needed. The price would remain the same and is also billed through ComEd. So no, no uh, dual billing or any additional bills or invoices. Um, the next slide here shows what the premium is for 50% green. You can see that there's a very, very marginal difference between the standard offer and the 50% green option. Just to backtrack it there, it's uh, three, uh, trying to look out the decimal points. Uh, yeah, it's uh, about 16, sorry, about $5,000 annually, uh, the difference between 50% green versus your standard offer. And then to go to 100% green, uh, it's about $15,000 in the difference okay. Okay. annually. Can I ask one question along the other lines? Mm -hmm. So, let, okay, so we have green energy, mm -hmm. uh, renewable energy, let's say, uh, but we also have energy that comes from uh, nuclear, mm -hmm. which is clean. I know it's not renewable, but it's a clean energy. Uh, uh, we have uh, gas uh, plants. Uh, we come from natural gas, and I guess there's still coal burning uh, plants. Yep. Quite a few still on on, on the grid. So, uh, can we also potentially break it down and saying we don't want any of our energy coming from coal? Uh, that we want it either coming from nuclear or from uh, uh, plants that run gen, uh, that run on natural gas. Sure. Uh, th the short answer is that'd be very difficult to do. Okay. Um, That's Because the suppliers offer different generation mixes. The easiest thing to do is just to buy 100% so, renewable. So all the other uh, generations is dumped on the grid as a non-renewable Exactly. Energy. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I would ask. So it would eliminate, so essentially if your goal was to eliminate the coal, then we would just purchase the 100% then, then, you're covered. then you're covered. Then you're covered, right. right. So is nuclear considered green? It is not. See? It's not. So that would be a problem. No, no we're not taking nuclear. I asked, just asked them. See? Nuclear is clean, but it's not a renewable energy. It's not considered energy. a renewable energy. There's, it's other, not, it's not. there's a lot of other issues with yeah. nuclear, with right. spent fuels and mm -hmm. the safety aspects and all that. I right. just, mm -hmm. uh, I think they'll be. Mm-hmm. So uh, moving forward, this gives you a, a, a quick breakdown of the differences. I apologize for all the content there, but uh, we highlighted the 36-month option based on our outlook moving forward for prices and where the numbers came in overall. So this summarizes the, both the annual results and the term results versus what the county has been paying historically. Um, so just looking over here, um, from an annual perspective with your standard offer, you're looking at approximately $20,000 in annual savings. Uh, for 50% green, it's about 15,000. And for 100% green, about a $10,000 savings annually versus the current historical ComEd rate. Um, and then you have it extrapolated over the term. So, um, and then your percentages respectively. Yeah, so if you did 36 months, exactly. Jim, yeah. looking at these rates, I I would almost suggest we lock in for four. No matter what we what we do on the other, 
with the with the rise in interest rates, the, the talk of inflation, with the economy starting to really get on solid footing, the unemployment numbers are down. I think if we could lock into our longer term, that may benefit the, the county long term. The other thing is with the with the, I mean, we're already seeing our gasoline prices at some of the fuel contracts we did at the Forest Preserve starting to inch up a little bit. So I would be in favor of, of locking in a four-year term instead of a three. Yeah, but why, why does the four-year rate, why, why does that drop off so much as far as the annual savings? I mean, you're going, say, let's look at 100%. What are you going to get it off for the supply? Right. Right. Well, they they understand, they understand. <laughs> To lock in that, that four year, you drop it down 20 percent. to say, how do you get eight thousand dollars instead of ten a year? Instead of ten a year, so your overall is thirty-three thousand dollars savings at 100 percent. Is that the overall or the four year? That's that's over the term. Look, that's not per year. Yeah. But look, you know, I, uh, I think that might have been the, the, the last one, right? Thirty-three thousand four seventy-eight. Correct. This number here. So over four years. You save a total of thirty-three thousand over three years. You save thirty, so you're only saving three thousand more by getting that fourth year. Right. That's assuming that the electric rate stays the same. Understand. If the electric rate goes up, then you're saving. A Understand. Mm -hmm. more. Look, you know, if we, if we if we all if we all could uh, know what the markets are going to do, <laughs> we'd all be sit floating on some you know two hundred and fifty foot yacht somewhere, right? So so so. Uh, but to, to uh, what we're doing here. Is just keep in mind that we're not necessarily here to, to you know, we're, we're hedging the market, but we're also uh, stabilizing our cost for budgeting purposes and so forth. Yeah. Uh, so, well, what I'm saying is, is that whether it's three or four years or, or, you know, there's less savings, here again, it depends on what the energy markets do. I happen to think the energy markets are going to continue to creep up. They went pretty flat for Mm -hmm. uh, Correct. A couple of years. I do think they're going to creep up. Uh, you know, to what point, I don't know. Like I say, if I knew, I'd be out there on that big boat. But in four That's years, there's also going to be a lot more renewable mm -hmm. coming along. Which well, that, cost <coughs> well, the, the, well, right I'm sorry, now, I didn't though, hear you. I said in four years, there should be more renewable <coughs> coming online eventually may bring the cost down even more. And part, so, of, um, part of the beginning of the presentation, there was some backstory about what's going on in this marketplace. Um, the reason why we were honing in on 36 months um, was primarily one of two reasons. Um, we were under the impression that the county could only consider a 36-month maximum term. Is that but, true, Mary? Oh, well, there you go. That's, <laughs> but that's the, the other, Let's just move on. The other part, the other so part was... 36 months. The other part of it was based on our outlook for energy prices moving forward, um, which we'll right get to the, the end at the start, presentation. Mary. <laughs> uh, we expect that natural gas, Sorry. which is the marginal fuel used to generate electricity in, in this region, is going to remain in a relatively bullish price environment moving forward, especially over the next 18 to 24 months. Um, like Jim was saying, you know, no one has that crystal ball, and just based on where the numbers are coming in, uh, 36 takes a lot more risk off the yeah. table. Um, the, the primary reasons driving that, that rationale is uh, right now we're about 20% below the five-year average for natural gas inventory levels nationally. Um, this winter just ended Monday, and so um, it's been a long winter, and so there's a natural demand to refill natural gas inventories for next winter. Um, we've had announcements of more nuclear and coal plants coming offline this year um, do down in Texas and here in PJM. Um, so that's going to be replaced by new natural gas fire generation. And then, like you alluded to earlier, the economy is is doing well, and industrial demand is expected to continue to grow. And we're exporting natural gas. So demand for gas is continuing to grow. Um, that being said, there's plenty of gas out there to, to pull from the ground. Um, it just We believe it's going to be a very tight environment, and so we'll see a steady, firm, bullish environment that pr will persist over the next 24 to 36 months. Well, especially when, I mean, we're seeing it ourselves with all the solar coming on next four years, it's going to be off the charts, I'm sure, of what that's yeah. going to be. But it doesn't mean it's, but it doesn't mean it's less expensive energy, energy no, right. for I'm them saying. to produce, because it, it depends on how they're right. amortizing their debt, depends on depreciation schedules that the mm -hmm. IRS allows, and so forth. So initially, because of the investment and, and how they apply that investment to their cost, you know, yeah, so anyways. that's right. <laughs> yeah. Mary could have told us that right yeah. from the start. Yeah. We, we didn't even have to have that. We could have said that was that was what I was so told. But so. all, about the three -year <laughs> all right, Mary. <laughs> so, okay, so let's 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 just move on. Let's yeah. get through this. Okay. 
Um, now we move into natural gas. Um, so the county has had a market-based natural gas agreement with Constellation Energy since July 2003. Um, so essentially that chart illustrates what the county has effectively paid for the gas since that agreement's been in place. Again, that green line is giving you a representation of what the bid results will look like, so how you could have managed that from a historical perspective. Um, some key statistics here. The historical average has been about $4.30 per decatherm. Uh, the maximum has been $6.80, the minimum $2.20. Um, there are a handful of accounts that are on the NICOR supply. Um, so I just wanted to show those as well. If you did nothing, NICOR would just simply sell you the, your natural gas supply. Um, again, when we talk about power, we're always talking about natural gas. So same idea here from a historical perspective, looking at when you could buy for the calendar years 2019 moving forward. It's a very advantageous time to purchase natural gas here in, in the what they call the Chicago City Gate region. Um, your percentage off the minimum is about 1.5 to 16 percent depending on the calendar year and we're currently trading in the zero to one percentile meaning that prices uh, historically speaking have never been lower than they are today uh, giving you uh, an idea as to how the county is currently using the gas about 70,000 decatherms annually uh, over 23 accounts obviously primarily heating during the winter time um, this is the results from the bids that we first got in last Monday um, Vanguard Energy came in as the top supplier. Um, their initial offer was 0% swing, meaning that based on your historical usage numbers, if you deviated from that, you'd pay a market rate. Um, on the next slide, we'll address that. We negotiated that up to 100% swing, so you'd have that assurance. Um, so the, the results from yesterday, uh, Direct Energy came in for 12 and 24 months as the top supplier, and then Vanguard on the 36 to 48. Again, 100% swing, use as much as you need. Vanguard has 90-day payment terms, or 60, whichever is preferred, and direct energy would be, um, would be 60. So the savings on the natural gas side is much greater than on the power side. Um, again, honing in on that 36-month recommendation based on what we were talking about earlier, um, should yield um, versus the historical price uh, just over $200,000 using what you guys have paid historically. Um, over the term, um, it would be north of $409,000 for th 36 months. Yeah, that's a nice one. Okay, I'm good. Yep. 36 months for me. And then this last slide, again, just summarizes everything we just talked about, the rationale for the 36-month recommendation and the general conclusion that if you lock in 36 months, depending on the renewable percentage, your total annual savings would be anywhere between $146,000 to $156,000 a year. Okay, so uh, we love saving money, of course. Uh, uh, I would like to go 100% green. So, okay, well, the, I think there's two, two decisions to concur with the recommendation, uh, 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 but there's also the discussion of the renewable, renewable. Mm -hmm. so uh, uh, go ahead Don. I just want to remind everyone that Will County is a major producer of nuclear power with Braidwood units one and two mm -hmm. and I think it's important that we keep on nuclear and remember who's the largest taxpayer in this county that pays for our bills it's excellent nuclear they're the biggest property taxpayer we have so I'm for including nuclear on our electric side because nuclear is a big commitment in Will County. Well, you know, along those same lines, we also have, uh, is it still for, uh, Midwest Generation? Is this, uh, it's got the old coal po power plant that are converting to gas? Y y yes. What's it called now? What is it? Whatever the company is. We also have a nuclear, I mean, a, a uh, coal plant here where they're taking the investment of that uh, uh, of converting that plant and putting in that investment to natural gas so i think you make a good point don well to to your point about exelon constellation energy is a subsidiary of exelon corp um exelon owns constellation i just so. don't want the county to exclude nuclear when nuclear has been important for this county since probably about 19 late 70s mm -hmm. which if we did all green that would do but it's so all I, part of the same company well, you know, here again, I, I think that, uh, well, you, you, you make a good point. You know, uh, folks that own uh, uh, nuclear plants are going to other energy. 
Right. And indeed, they have basically said they're phasing out their nuclear plants over time. Uh, uh, and I'm not even sure. I think, our, I don't know if our uh, Braywood plant even applied for oh, yeah. an extension. Renewed. Did they apply for the extension? Yes, it was. They did renew it. Yeah. So, and, uh, but I think you make a good point. I, I, I think that, uh, well, I'll listen to that for debate. I can tell you what I think, but you know, I think a 50 50 is, is, is a step in the well, right direction. But what I, would say, what I would say to you, Don, is if we can reduce budgets and reduce our tax rate, that benefits the plant more than us buying what we so, buy. Yeah. Well, what I'm so, saying is this if you're going to try to save $20,000 and these people pull their property tax bill and see what the county gets, you're. No-brainer. So let me let me ask you, how much, I don't even know if there's an answer to this, but if you had to take a wild guess of how much energy uh, from the nuclear power plant and, and the ga gas uh, uh, plant, how much of that energy do you think is, is on the grid, is it? I can tell you. Um, it's in the beginning here. Let's see. So natural gas in this region accounts for 38 percent of total power generation. Nuclear is down to 17 percent, um, and so coal is 30 percent, and then the remaining is all renewable or hydro. So, so actually, if we if we said we want to be 50 percent or 60 percent, we we would we'd be eliminating basically the coal plants. The, the power is going to go I on. I don't come yeah. that way. I know it doesn't segregate. I know. I know it's not segregated right. on the grid. But I'm. I'm just saying in general, if you just take the percentages, you know, you know, the, you know we're still using some of that that energy mm -hmm. that's on. You know, on the reverse side, you know, the other part that happens to our, our especially our nuclear plant, is they, you know, they vary their production because of the cost. You know, they tend to fire up when there's high demand and keep low when there's less <coughs> demand. Uh, but I, I, I think we could start out at 50 or 60. I, I don't think it necessarily has to be 100 percent right off the, the, the start. But you know, I'll, I'll entertain any, any motion somebody wants to put forward. <coughs> I was going to say, well, on the gas, we're not. It's not an issue, yeah. right? It's right. Not an issue on the gas. We're just talking on the on the electric side. Okay, you know what I think I'm going to do? Let me just let me just get right to it. I'm going to split the baby here a little bit. I'll entertain a motion that we suggest we go 60 percent renewable on energy that's used in 60. So that's that's what the motion I'm going to. That's not an option. We can do 60, but do you want 50 or 100? 50. 50 or 100. We can do any percentage okay, you want, but we just did 50, 50 as I'm the. I'm going to say 50. The baby then. Is 50 I'm going to say 50 then. <laughs> the direct, you know. So I'm going to split the baby farther anymore. Okay, so this way, look, this is a vote. Uh, uh, you can start with 50. If it gets turned down, then the recommendation to the full board would be to go 100. You know, rather than continue to debate it, it's one or the other. So I'll entertain a motion that we go 50%. I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, take the roll vote. This is on the 50%. Correct. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? I'm going to do a no. Alone. No. Poole. Yes. Parker. Yes. Staley Fury. Yes. Chiminello. Yes. Weigel. Yes. Winfrey. Yes. And Eustace. Yes. Okay, so we'll go 50%. Now, this is just a recommendation to the full board. The full board wants to change it. They can. They can make a motion to amend it. So we're not committed till the board decides. Right. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments to make? Could I just ask a yeah. question, though, Mike? I yes. noticed on all, thank you, all of your slides, it did not include the delivery costs for ComEd and Night Corps. Correct. And those are substantial savings that you're showing us. However, I was just curious about that cost. No control. We have those charges are regulated. Right. And so there's nothing that we could do to change what okay. they would be charging you for them, other than evaluating from the bill perspective to make sure that you're being you charged the right talk rate about class. What they're going to charge. No. Okay. It's all subject to DPU approval, okay. and then that can change. Okay. Typically, yeah. from a cost and budget yeah. perspective, yeah. we tell uh, all of our clients to 
budget accordingly a one to three percent <laughs> annual escalator in delivery costs because the tariffs provide that uh, okay. inflation adjustment provision. For so that's that. for NICOR also, for the gas also? Yeah. NICOR and yeah. ComEd, correct. Okay. okay. Jim, okay. Jim, can I just ask one real quick? Sure, go ahead. Right now, if every county and every municipality and you know government agencies were to jump on 100 percent on a 100 percent plan is there a hundred percent available for every 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 municipality everybody that wanted to sign the contract as of right now or is it something that uh is not available yet to every community so if everyone jumped on would they be able to find enough renewable energy in the system right, right is now? there enough supply to meet demand yeah um the the short answer is yes um, how that would work is essentially when the county elects to do 50% green with the supplier, the supplier is going to offset and procure 50% of what your needs are into the marketplace from renewable energy. <laughs> the kilowatt hours that you're using and burning at the facilities, they're just electrons in the grid. So it's hard to say where those are actually coming from. But so everyone from the signed a contract to go to 100% at some point, there's not enough, there, there's not enough well, right? Not for counties. I asked uh, this question too. Because if if that, it's just my question if there was enough I mean is because if there is isn't enough to satisfy everyone's desire mm -hmm. to go 100 percent then I think it would be irresponsible for us to push 100 percent right now that's all I'm saying the the suppliers can meet that need it would be through financial transactions uh, oh. they would they would go out and buy it in the marketplace okay. so yeah. okay Jim. okay you yeah, go ahead Mike I just got a question. Comment. Well, uh, two comments. I mean, I, I voted no because I think we should go 100%. I want us to be a leader all the time, and 100% would be the way to go. However, based on the 50%, if that is what goes forward, Melissa, I just make sure that we do our percentages because then when we're doing the budget in May and we know we're going to have a 4% reduction in our cost, that should be reflected in all of our individual budgets. What, what was the uh, amount of line items, line items that we had, 17 or so, that you said? that were affected on the energy or however it works out, we'll have to go through the line items to make sure we. That's all consolidated in one budget. Right. So okay. So we'll be able to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure the savings is incorporated. And I voted no for all of those reasons. Reasons too. I think yeah. we should be. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank Great. You. Thanks. See you next Thank week. You. Give this down to. No, I'll give it to Liz. I got one at the office. Oh, okay. Just give yeah, yeah, it to Come on, Lauren. Do it, everybody. See that beautiful flower <laughs> jacket. <laughs> yeah. quit, quit playing solitaire over there. Pay attention. <laughs> playing solitaire. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Okay, four. Okay. Uh, re review of the ERP uh, demos, uh, Mike. So we had Shay. So we had uh, nine qualified bidders originally. Uh, of the nine qualified bidders, uh, the selection committee met. We narrowed it to three vendors, and those three vendors came in for a two-day presentation each, attended by uh, members of the selection committee and other interested parties. The three vendors that we selected uh, for demonstrations were HSO, which was bidding a Dynamics 365 Microsoft cloud-based solution. We had Superion, which is the successor company to SunGuard, uh, which is their own system. And then we had Quintel uh, bid an SAP-based finance system. Uh, the original bids ranged from 671000 to $13.3 million, uh, with most of them around, yeah, yeah, one of them was way a, a serious outlier. Most of them were in between three and around $3 million. Uh, the demonstrations went forward. We scored all of them, everybody. We had a scoring system laid out in the bid. Uh, there was a clear selection, and we have moved forward uh, with discussing uh, HSO and moving to cloud-based uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 finance system. Uh, it has a lot of advantages. We will be doing a follow-up demo to be sure. There are a couple things that we wanted to specifically look at, again, to make sure that we were absolutely confident in, in the selection that we were making. Uh, if we go that way, it might also require some adjustment to our Microsoft licensing agreements 
Uh, so I've already started looking at that, uh, but it's a big jump forward. Uh, a couple of the key features of that system, A, it is cloud-based, B, it's fully HTML5 compliant, and what that means is, is that we can extend uh, dashboard activity out to interested parties. So, you know, uh, Mr. Frisalone can have uh, the finance system on his cell phone. We can customize oh, the dashboard that's, that's for him, the, the and it would show him yeah. exactly whatever <laughs> balances or activities from the finance system forward he wants. Uh, we'll be able to do employee self-service. We're looking towards doing employee self-service for a lot of HR and payroll functions being able to look up your own pay stubs, that sort of stuff. Um, it's very advanced. It's a, it's a, uh, it, we're jumping about four generations of technology. You know, right now, New World Systems is a green screen based system originally envisioned in the mid to late eighties. And this is got Probably it all. Four. Okay. So Mike, you don't, yeah. you, you're just, I was being generous. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't need any action. You don't need any action. You're just no, I just want to let you know that we're moving <laughs> okay. forward. Uh, and right, we anticipate uh, May, I believe, if everything continues as, uh, as, as mm -hmm. is planned, to come to the board with the selection. Um, and they were the low bidder as well, okay. which is unusual. So. so does anybody have any questions for Mike? Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank you. Mike, Mike before you run away, I'm going to walk out with you. Take over. Take okay. Let it work for a second. <laughs> Take over for a second. Which, which number were you? <laughs> Five. Five. Okay, authoring renewal wraparound insurance for a community health center. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Authorizing IGA for Champaign County for electronic recycling. Move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Authoring IGA for the village of Lamont for access to the radio system. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Supplemental re uh, resolution for the payment of the county engineer salary, MFT salary section. Mm -hmm. Second? Okay. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, the CMAP onto the 2050 presentation for the county board on April 19th. We're we need a resolution to put it on the. It's not a resolution. It's just putting it. Putting it on the on the, on the yeah, agenda. agenda. Oh, okay. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Replacement hires for pre-posting for EMA. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Replacement hire for pre-posting for ICT department for telecommunications assistant. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Replacement hires for the LCC 911 department. Second. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Replacement hire for land use department. Second. Um, any discussion? How many? <coughs> okay. Okay. All right, Chuck. Any discussion? Gonna... All those in uh, favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And mm -hmm. we're down to number 14, replacement hire for Sunny Hill. Uh, okay, replacement hire for Sunny Hill. Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have a establishing subcommittee for the CM interviews for the health facility. Uh, uh, we just, Mary, I don't have to, we just have to approve the, that we're going to do the formation of the committee. I don't have a point, people, members that will go on there yet. So we can just establish just it, and then we'll come back later, and uh, I can put, uh, we, we'll have a discussion. Okay, move, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion well, carries. Move, move second. Proclamations. Uh, uh, Did we want to save some space? Well, you know what, let me, I'll do that uh, when I get down to the, I'll have it for, okay, well, I can do it now. Uh, I'd like to leave a space for, uh, I want to make sure I get this right. One is uh, for the appropriation of the new uh, animal con control facility. Mary has advised us that we just can't move that money out of this, out of the cash. So I don't know. If we, we probably don't need to do anything in regard to that. What we'll probably do, Mary, is take it out of bond funds as a loan to the animal control. And then they'll pay it back at the beginning of the uh, fiscal year. 
Okay, so uh, we'll save a space. If if it's if you don't have everything ready for us, we'll just we'll just pull it off. Okay, all right. Well, I want to make sure there's something in there that says it's a loan uh, uh, from animal to animal control budget too. So I'd like to see. That, that people don't have an understanding. It's going to come from animal control. Yeah. It's it's a, payback, there's a payback right? on this. So. So, Jim, just, just, so, just for clarification, Mary. So <coughs> that fund was established specifically to, as uh, you know, fee for capital improvements. So now that we want to spend the money that's in that fund on capital improvements, we cannot take it out until we actually line item yeah. budget it in the previous uh, next year? Uh, I don't think that's the case. Yeah, right. I think what I'm it confused. is, I think it's unassigned cash. I, I don't... I mean, I'll, it, look at, I'll work with Karen yeah. to understand how it's reflected in the budget. My understanding is the money was not appropriated during the budget process. So if it wasn't, you cannot increase your overall appropriations. You can move from one mm -hmm. line item or, or one to another, but you can't, you cannot increase yeah. your overall and I don't believe those funds are restricted, I guess, is what and, I'm And saying. that's what I was getting at. It I don't was, believe they're restricted the, funds. The account was created specifically for that. The fees are I, I don't believe the, I don't believe that's the case, right? Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I believe it's just unassigned cash, uh, and, it, and it was not uh, uh, restricted because they could use it for operations. So that's the case. Could we do that then? No, Mary's, well, Mary's, Mary's telling us we can't take it. It was, it was not appropriated. Uh, it was, un, you know, it was unappropriated cash. If it's, right, <coughs> but it's in there somewhere in the budget, and we can move it from a line item to another one. We will. But my understanding is it's not reflected in the budget. Just, just so, so. Just do it this way. You do it as a bond. Well, whatever, Mary. If we, you know, yeah, we'll either do it as a loan or it would be. Yeah, I prefer that we could just move it somehow, but if we can't, we can't. You know, I mean, okay. But we'll we'll leave a uh, uh, we'll leave a space on there, and you can fill in the uh, if if you need more and if you need more time, we can postpone for a month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what else do I have here? Proclamations. Uh, well, no, I got some other stuff here. Jim, uh, we, I, I, I also, go ahead. We need another space to move that to cap them. We need another space to move what? To no? move the project. The project. The motion. Cap. Oh, yeah. Move it to so so uh, we were going to do a space for a resolution moving animal control to the capital committee and having the capital committee uh, act as the... Uh, Owner agent, as they do on the other projects. Uh, do you need an official I don't. I don't think there's any. We can move forward with those types of things, right? Well, we're going to leave. A, we're going to leave a space. So I wonder, do they need to be separate resolutions? Okay. So we'll save one space, moving the project to the capital committee, and another space, making the capital committee the owner agent. Uh, uh, even though I think there has to be some connection between the animal control and the capital committee, but we can talk about that later. So we're going to leave spaces for both of those items, Mary. If for some reason you think we're premature, just let us know. Yes, we're leaving a space. We're leaving a space. Uh, 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 well, well, it'll be two things. We're going to leave a space on 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 on, on the financing of the either. We're, it's going to if you say you can't use the take that money, then then we'll bring it as a loan. If you say we can take the money, then we'll change it to. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So those are those uh, three uh, items. I'll entertain a motion to add those to the agenda. Second. Okay. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now, moving along, I'm over here now. Authorize the RTA agreement here. Oh, that's right. There's a, there, the, yeah, that's right. There's the, uh, also need to leave a space for RTA agreement. This has to do with 
they put the wrong date down on our agreement with the RTA. This is what helps fund the uh, uh, Will County Mobility uh, Program. So there's, we just need to bring it back and approve the amended uh, agreement with the correct date. Okay, so that's what that is. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, place that on the agenda. Motion second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, uh, yeah, there was an, uh, a couple items that were, uh, as far as appointments go, that were tabled. They will come back, and then I'll uh, uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, appointments as presented. So moved. Moved. Right Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Now we to let and then we'll get to the land use. Uh, no proclamations, just to let you know. Oh, proclamations. Yeah, I can't no, forget no, no, about no, you and Herb. Can I? Okay. we got the National Fair Housing for April, and Lauren's just going to read it at her desk. You know what I'd like to also do? There, there's a number of things that are this month. It's get all, a list of all the ones. It's also National Aut Autism Month, Yeah. which is, of course, having an autistic grandson is a little near and dear to me. We did recognize it last year, or we... But I, but it, it doesn't have to be uh, just the rec just the recognition, recognition of the fact. That there's, and I think there was something else that caught my ear. Could you I take heard. a look and see what some of those recognitions and, have been, and we can take that list and we'll and, give know, it to someone. No, well, Chuck or Herb, you can just one of you can do it. Just say, yeah. you know, we'd also like to just recognize it. Right. There's also right. National right. Autistic, and just right. and, yes. and just read them off. We no, actually should set no that up for a monthly basis. Right, just we just say it's so all. Just recognize yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we can do it. Okay, so we, we can do it. So can we add that to, that to your? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion on that to add those. Yeah, we'll move. Right. move. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and like I say, just go through the whole list yeah, and just okay. mention everything. We're going to yeah. do that for the month. That way we can reduce some of the. Well, I think it's something we should do on a regular basis. It's. We're just going to do it monthly. We'll just do it monthly. Every one of the ones that go through. And, you know. If it's, you know, National Pumpkin Month, we'll say it, was, you just read them off. No, no elaboration on them, right, right, right. But there is some that occasionally we might want to pull out. Uh, you know, well, I say, uh, uh, so, at any rate. Okay, so we got a motion, second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have the... Uh, uh, appointments of the county executive. We always, we already did that, right? I already did that, okay. okay now we're to committee reports. Uh, Tom? I'll a we'll ask her. Okay. I had a couple, I, 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 a couple I comments on it. Uh, <clears throat> they, they, uh, it says in here that the, uh, Need for parking generated to conduct a home occupation must be met by off-street parking. Can I, can, I, can I interrupt you just for a second? Rep, since you're, you know, I haven't read it. Is Tom the only one who's received the opinion? I, I just, no. The only, I they sent it to the office? Okay. I gave Tom a copy at the same time. You, you know what, Tom? Rather than you go through it, why don't we uh, wait, let everybody take a look at it. Okay. The other people can comment. And then you know you can make your points uh, right. because none of the rest of us have seen it. Right. So I think you well, get a better, you get a, you're going to get a better discussion. I think. That's fine. If you do there, that. there was one. one well, thing. you can ask. I'm just telling you in, in general. I know. I just wanted to say that uh -huh. if you want to make a comment about something, go ahead. I don't want to. I'm not trying to stop All you right. from doing it. It quotes 155 10-10E uh, in the opinion. I look at the county board's website or, or the county clerk's website on the, the uh, documents of our, our ordinances, and that is for swimming pools. So I don't know if you've got a different version or an older version of uh, the county ordinances. Here again, why don't you sit down with Mary if it's, a, if it's Right. Well, it's referred to all, th all throughout the Well, we have to see the if the opinion. clerk's thing, it was clerk's information is correct. Online. Oh, we have to see what it's on. Can we, I just be a scrivener? Yeah. Maybe your book is outdated. 
I don't or the know. website. Maybe the website's wrong. Or the website, because sometimes people don't update their websites. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we'll, that, that's yeah. why we'll wait, make any comments you want to Mary, Mary. If you want it to be a part of a discussion, either at your committee or here, uh, you can you can do that now, all right? Uh, as far as the land use, uh, we've got uh, two zoning cases. Uh, one is a special use permit for a firearms dealer. Uh, the other is a map amendment from... Uh, a1 to R2 in Manhattan. Okay. And a zoning uh, resolution concerning the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, concerning uh, something that was rejected by the Zoning Board of Appeals <coughs> was also rejected by the Land Use Committee. Uh, he has uh, variances. Deals with variances. buildings too close to the property line, and he wanted us to waive those uh, give them a variance, and we denied that. So it's going to full county board. And you did some of it without a permit. I think that would be another issue. Well, that's yeah. not what he's asking for, though. Yeah, okay. That's all I have. Okay, any questions for Tom? Okay. Finance Committee, Mike? Um, I think we're putting it back, leave it on my agenda, the transferring of the appropriations that we just cleared up with the clerk. I think we brought that down okay. here, right? Um, we also <coughs> have appropriating additional grant funds in the health department budget. We have the uh, 2017 final levy numbers, transferring and increasing some appropriations, county kind of budget, our year-end cleanup should be the final one, Sign the assignment of tax sales certificates, and then authorizing the executive to do the next uh, necessary for tax bill. Okay, so any, any, any questions for Mike? Okay, move along, public works, Don, you have anything? <clears throat> Okay, let's be looking. Is there anything for judicial? Benefield's not here. Okay, there's nothing for judicial. Public health and safety, Judy's not here. Anything for uh, public health and safety. Uh, legislative, our chairman's not here. So anything for legislative. We're going, we're going to Washington uh, next week to talk about our federal agenda. That's, and then I'll jump back to you, Don. Public works. We're doing some contracts. Uh, we're doing a jurisdictional transfer to the building. Any questions for Don? Okay, then moving to capital improvements. Just have one. It's a negotiation with the executive's office with Kluber for the uh, health department. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Tumanal? Okay, executive committee, any questions for me? So any public comments today? Just one. Go uh, ahead. Announced that the bartending for Cure is tonight with uh, Tyler and Gloria here. So if you have some time to get yeah. out there, please. This is yeah. Get this, out there. this is one of two though, right? Because I can't make yeah. tonight. Yeah. I'll make I'll make the one. Next one's at Gatto's, right? I'll make that one. Yeah. Okay. I got a comment too. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to congratulate since Sue is here. Sue and the whole health department. It was in the paper today that. Uh, Will County is among the 10 healthiest counties in Illinois. We moved up from 11 to 9. Great accomplishment. Yep. Well, okay. I saw it Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll applaud the people who in Will County who want to get healthier, too. You know. <laughs> Individual responsibility for your health, right. right? Okay. Uh, uh, so, okay. And we've been okay. away. And then... Uh, <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to amend the county board uh, to approve the county board agenda as amended. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. Moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Okay.